Oh, the pretentious vlog, it's about to begin. Three things that I absolutely cannot stand about the revised 2024 Denali HD. Now this is basically a brand new truck. It's got, I think 250 miles on it, if I'm not mistaken, I might be misaccounting on that. And it is the ultimate trim. Although it might be somewhat deceiving because it's got a non-ultimate trim grill on it. And well, that would have been one of the things that I don't like about it, but I actually have three other things that I don't like, and then I've got other things that I'm not gonna say. And then I've got other things that we're gonna jump into as well. So let's yeah. do it. Lot of things that I didn't do. A stack of paper like a book, not a Kindle. You outdated, I'm the one they getting into, and I don't break a sweat. Let's get it, 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 let's get it. Child, please, I don't need a towel, please. This is easy as a breeze. I can't teach you how to be me. Now you see me, now you don't, I'm a magician. You are limited, I am a limited edition. They don't even make them like me anymore. I'm so flashy, I don't even say cheese. Before we get into that, ladies and gentlemen, you have a chance to take home my 2020 Denali Duramax that I actually called my personal baby, my love, for quite a long time. And now my love is up for grabs. We're not broken up, but it was a mutual thing. And really, I just kind of want to share the love with one of you. You have a chance to win that truck and $30,000 cash if you would like to enter for it. Check out that link in the description below. Cheers to that, my friends. Now, I need to show you guys something real quick. We're about to jump into the vlog. I'm not trying to do one of these extended intros, but something really cool back here is happening. Check out this powder coat color, it's so sick. That, my friends, is for an upcoming build that we're working on, and yes, you guys are gonna see some details of that here very soon. It's a truck that I've been hiding from you guys. I haven't really been hiding it, I just haven't been filming it. If you come to Left Lane Coatings, you would see it. That's all I'm gonna say. This is called Copper Coin 2. We've got some Flight Fab brackets here, some Flight Fab 4-Link, Carly coils. It's kind of my go-to. We got the top hats for the shock mount. But I just wanted to show you guys how cool this color is. I don't even think lighting really does it any justice. It's a semi-gloss finish. Let's see how the reflection... Look at that. Oh my God. Deshaun, you absolutely crushed it on this thing, my guy. And then also take a look at my new-to-me Corgi tire machine. Thank you guys so much for your business here at Left Lane Coatings. Things have been absolutely popping off and I gotta give credit where credit's due. It's all thanks to you and, well, of course, my amazing team over here ensuring that we create nothing but the absolute best powder coat purchase experience in all of Pennsylvania. Now I'm finishing up, ooh, a penny. I'm not gonna pick it up though, it's on tails. Tails never fails. The spark is complete, now I'm ready to spark a conversation. The Denali HD Ultimate that I picked up not only but maybe about a month ago and it went right into the guillotine. It got chopped into a million pieces and then it came out looking 15 times better. I have a, ultimately I have a problem with the ultimate trim because in my opinion, General Motors had a fantastic opportunity to really truly build on the loyal customer base that the Denali trim line offers. This is like the business owner that wants to ride in class but also have the ability to utilize Title 179 as a write-off deduction for their business to do business. You can buy what is just south of a $100,000 truck and write it 100% off in that tax year. I'm not an accountant, so don't take my advice. Consult with an accountant about that. That's my decision disclaimer, but I do know a few things about business. That is a wonderful mechanism to enable business owners to do more of what they need to do, which is run their business. But then you drop the whole, hey, we're going to make this a Denali. We're going to give it this really super badass interior. That is a very big stepping stone upgrade from that of the previous generation. We're going to give it softer composite leather. We're going to give it massaging seats. We're going to give it this whole new big screen. We're even going to put like a suede Alcantara headliner in just to make you feel like you're in a super truck. But we will not stop there. We will then give all this chrome to our owners on the back end. We just want to make sure that they stand out from the rest. So we're going to put Vader chrome up front. And I didn't agree with that at all. So I deleted the Vader chrome. I deleted the Vader chrome insert. I found the standard chrome. Big thanks to Laura Buick GMC. I'm telling you. The power of Spark is impressive, and you need to try it for yourself if you want to in that link in the description below. But we don't litter, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta take care of that. So big thank you to Laura Buick GMC for helping us pioneer those part numbers, and big thanks to the team at Peach Bottom Auto Body for helping to facilitate my dreams to reality. Okay, now that we're past that, that is not one thing that I am going to complain about with this platform. These are actually real-world things that I do believe are kind of just deviations of logic from the design table. You know, these fine ladies and gentlemen of General Motors 
sat down and said, let's take the exact same chassis, revise the interior, change the front end, change the tail lights, and really make it about the driver's experience and let's kind of improve some of the look. So it was minor changes up front, which I agree with. I think they look good, especially on this platform. But now that we're past the whole Vader Chrome thing, it's about the three things that I absolutely, like really do genuinely hate without sounding pretentious about this truck. Number one, if you want to open your Denali Duramax from the outside without taking the key out of your pocket, by the way, the key looks just a little bit different now. You can see that right there. They changed it up a little bit. It's actually like plasticky, whereas the old key actually had some rubber on it. I think I'd prefer that, but whatever. That's not what I'm complaining about. I'm complaining about the fact that you can hit this button and lock the truck. You can hit this button to unlock the truck. The strength of it here is I like being able to haptically have that button. Like the Fords have this thing where you touch this pad on the back of the handle and there's a delay. So you're kind of like, all right, cool. Is it unlocked? Is it not? And then it kind of trips you up and gets a little confusing at times. I like that button. It's responsive. It's good haptics, good feedback. I don't like the fact that there's no button on the back door. Now, I can't do it. And I'm a father. We're actually expecting another one in October. I've got a three-year-old here come June 23rd. And as a dad, when your truck is locked and you have a toddler right here and any of my parents know, or you're holding a, a stroller or a car seat and you just want to unlock your truck, open it, and then go, you can't, now you need to work up to the front. Yes, I know that sounds ridiculous, but I was spoiled because in the truck that you guys could win, it's actually set up that way. This truck is not set up that way. Fun little fun fact. Dylan, I probably sound so ridiculous, don't I? He loves me, it's all good. I love him too, he's a great guy. Okay, so from 20 to 23, the high countries, AKA the top trim of the Chevy model, they actually didn't have the buttons on the back door handles. Not a lot of people probably know that, but I've built a handful of them and you guys have taken them home, which I didn't mind. I'm like, okay, whatever. The high country, you know, I guess if you were to compare them, the Denali is supposed to be like one tier up from there. And there were little things. We don't have to get into it, but that was one of them. I'm like, all right, whatever, that's fine. I got this truck. I literally went to open it the other day in the back and I noticed it didn't have it. So I was naturally let down because I had it before. That was number one. Maybe this is also a good opportunity to let you guys know that there are more than three things that I'm discontent with, but we'll just stick to the main three for this video, all intensive sake purposes for anybody potentially shopping and exploring the purchase of one of these trucks. All right, number two. If you guys go out and you option yourself up a truck, what are one of those options that you can typically add in as an accessory? Lane departure. Okay, cool. Yep, I get it. I get it. Camera technology packages. Yep, yep, that's one of them. Sliding rear window. Potentially. Sometimes that's not a standard piece of equipment. Sunroof. Yes, a sunroof. We have a great sunroof on this truck, and I'm actually kind of happy. You actually might think I'm going to complain about not having a panorama sunroof, but... Uh, I'm actually not complaining about that. I like the smaller sunroof and I'm gonna be honest as to why. I'm a father, I've got Jack's car seat sitting back there. Again, soon to be father of two, I'm a very blessed man in this world. And I thank God for that. I don't like the big panorama because it's effectively half closed all the time anyway because my son gets blinded by the light. Although he does have some really cool American sunglasses that I think he took in the school with him today that I can't show you. So I typically like reaching up here and just being able to close this etc. But the one thing that we enjoy is when we start the truck up, interaction of a sunroof and a sliding rear window. So, you know, open the rear window up and then you can open the sunroof, tilt it, or you can open it back, right? So like it's tilted and you can get a really nice flowy breeze in here if it's, you know, like 50 degrees outside. But if you want to go ahead and slide it back, while it's, while it's tilted, you can't, right? You can't do that. What you need to do is you need to close it. Okay, now it's closed. Now you can slide it back. So now we're cruising. Everyone's happy, but it's getting a little bit cold outside because it's like it's like dusk time, right? Like the sun is going down, the heat of the day is going away. You can still, you can still hit the tilt button to close it, right? So that's cool. So like it has dual, dual button functionality purpose, but if you want to come up here, and you want to tilt it from the open position, just, you know, casually. These are just little things like, I just want to go back to the tilt position. In any other car, you hit it and it'll close and go to the tilt. Like you can hit the tilt button to close it now from opening with the slide, but you, you cannot, no, you're just not allowed to sneak that one by and do the whole, you know, the close thing and the tilt thing at one time. It has to be a, a two-stage operation, sequentially, of course, because if you don't do it sequentially, it's, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just not gonna work. So now that I got that out of the way, and I just really had to, to unpack that one there for you guys. And number three that I'm just not happy with, okay? As a man of many businesses, I try to preach perfection in all that I do. 
And I get it, things happen, but we always make it right, no matter what. Now, a man that owns a finishing business, our metal finishing business, AKA left lane coatings, AKA that of putting a very nice final finish on that of, of products, metal products. I look to the quality of the finish often. And I think we as automotive enthusiasts also have that knack, right? We have that eye. Like if you look at a wall that was painted with like bare paint from Home Depot, for instance, you can just see that it has this horrible orange peel and, and it's not a consistent lay and you can see the brush strokes or like the roller strokes but if you go out with like a Sherwin Williams 200 like a, a part acrylic or a, even latex based paint it lays and flows together extremely well you look at that on wheels or like paint on cars and you can typically denote quality from that right unfortunately the lighting right now is not really all that indicative but you can see it as you're sitting in the cockpit driving this truck this looks amazing okay don't get me wrong it looks absolutely fantastic but this here and the finish on these plastic buttons two out of ten it's got orange peel like i can't make it up it's got orange peel like i said it's it's black so obviously it's it's very honest so you can see like all the little just dust particulate from opening and closing the doors but you can see it's got orange peel like you guys can kind of see it there see that really horrible finish that basically means that either the mixture of the paint wasn't set right, or the mixture of the primer wasn't set right, or the substrate wasn't prepped accordingly. Do you see? You see those waves, that orange peel? Well, in the right light, obviously when sun isn't like directly shining in this area, it is so visibly apparent. And that to me is a big letdown. I really hate that about this. Again, pretentious. This vlog is like the definition of being perceived as a complainer. <laughs> but I felt like it was necessary to highlight some of these things as these trucks aren't little dollars at the end of the day. I actually have four things that I can't say that I that I hate. Like I don't, I don't hate this because I think I'd rather prefer it over the alternative option. But here, let me show you. Here's my view. What do you see when I put this thing in drive? Okay, here's my view. Like you're right at my eyes. What do you guys see? What's wrong here? Or what can I, what, what, what should I, or rather should I say, what can't you see now because the truck is in drive? I wanna hit the home button. I, I wanna go hit, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna hit the home button. Oh, no. No, I don't know. Okay, all right. Like, this is about as bad no, I also don't like that. This is about as bad as the Multi Pro is, as far as as far as design goes, right? Like you have your aesthetic functionality, and then you have your functional, uh, you know, performance. Really, the gear shifter directly in front of the the screen. So like, you kind of either have to go over or under or around to get to these buttons right here. So I don't know if this was taken exactly out of the 1500s, but the 1500 has a gear shifter right there. And I like that the gear shifter isn't right here because I think HD trucks should have the column shifter, especially like to those of you guys that plow and you know do a lot of backup and forwarding and whatever the case is, like rather than this thing right here. They use this entire area to, to put this trailer assist thing, which like I get it, but it really didn't need that real estate like i may or may not have a real estate company that i may or may not tell you guys about here at some point like we fix and flip houses so we'll get into that and there's like grades of real estate right like there's like your prime real estate you guys have heard that like location 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 then there's like b grade real estate and then there's like your c grade real estate and these like you know are relative to things of of importance and value uh commodities right so like like your prime real estate is like really good location access to highways but like off the highway and you got like you know, amenities close, but not too close, you know, whatever. This space I would define as prime real estate, like, you know, something of significant importance here, but they put that there. Now, I don't really know if that makes sense. Like, I think over here would have been probably plenty fine, or, you know, maybe like right here would have been plenty fine because guys that have these trucks aren't towing every day to where like, they just need to be able to reach down here and grab their emergency uh, brake gain adjuster. So anyway, I guess what I'm saying is like, did they pull this out of the 1500s and just not account for the fact that like the shifter is in is on the column instead of, you know, in the center console in these trucks? I really just don't know. So that doesn't really make any sense. The fifth thing that I don't like about this truck, I said three in the title, but like five things. And this is kind of ridiculous, but why would you only design at 
75% of the digital landscape of the screen because the screen technically goes to like, here, we'll use the dust in our favor. Like right there and all the way over, oh, all the way over here, right? So the screen goes from here, so you get that little space there to here, so you're, you're missing essentially from here to here over. We're just gonna go ahead and, and optimize it for 75% viewership because you know you really want what you can't have, right? And you just you just can't have that side or that side. Like you're just not allowed. I don't know. Does it make sense to you? And like this infotainment thing is cool. It's very nice. You can like leave the cameras on constantly as you drive. Like it doesn't time out. I made an Instagram post about that the other day, which I like. Especially like your blind spots, like you know backing up. Especially if you have like wide wheels and you're new to wide wheels. Like that's kind of cool. And you know you got like your 360. You can partition it in the thirds and you know you can watch like your back like bumping or you know backing up in the stuff um you can watch your trailer hitch you can watch like your bed and you can zoom in on like your fifth wheel and gooseneck assembly which i actually really like you can watch your cargo but you can only see it in this perspective and then you come out to like apple carplay and it fills that side so you can multitask but there's no way you can like close this button if you don't want to know that like, like your iPhone is numbered like this random number that like iPhones randomly do, and you can't just make it the full screen. So again, like you always want what you can't have. Do I care? No, this is a, this is a really nice screen. And this is again, the most pretentious vlog ever, but you're just not allowed. Number six is this thing R rattles sometimes. And it sometimes doesn't open. Like you kind of have to like do the double tap. You need to have your perk double tap enabled to like actually open it up because if you do it the first time, you need to double tap. So that wraps up the, the five things that I actually really hate about this truck. Well, that's where we're gonna wrap up this video, ladies and gentlemen. My wife, my son, and myself are actually gonna be headed out to Hershey Park for the afternoon because it's a beautiful day here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And we're gonna take full advantage of the family time potential that the sunshine brings. Thank you as always for tuning in to the channel. If you guys haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. Smash that thumbs up button on your way out. Grab some entries for Dream Deals giveaway number 32 that's sitting on inside. And we'll see y'all in the next upload. <laughs> I'm on my way to Hershey Park as we speak to pick up the family. All windows down, it's a beautiful day. And I'm just sitting here, I'm like, I'm really grateful for this truck, grateful for the opportunities that I have in life. And then I look down and I realize that there's actually, that there's another thing, a sixth, sixth thing. See that dead button right there? That would be such a fantastic location for an auxiliary switch, of which this truck has zero of. Zero auxiliary switches. I can't tell you guys how many limited trims, Laramie trims, limited Laramie trims, Longhorn trims. Uh, I've never had a limited Ford, but you know, essentially all the Platinums that I've had that I can't count on one hand that have factory uh, auxiliary switches or upfitter switches, whether they're up here or they're down there, or whatever the case is, this truck has none of them. So of course we're gonna put probably like 20 to 22 enthusiast rock lights on this truck eventually. You know, we include a fused and relayed switch, a standalone switch, which is no problem. And we always put them kind of up under here so they're in and out of the way, which we're gonna do. Again, really, like these things are just so easy and it's almost like it's almost like GM like wants to copy Ford on certain things and they all copy each other at the end of the day. I think that's safe to say at this point in time. But like if they copy too many things it'd be obvious for the obvious for the average bystander, you know. And I guess maybe if they, they just didn't want to copy their homework that maybe we'll have to wait like another four years for that feature to become a <laughs> become available. I have no idea. Also, the enthusiast license plate on that Chevy. Thanks for your support, brother.